really beautiful. It's something to marvel at. Thank you. I sometimes forget what talented builders our people are. The buildings reflect such a rich tradition of harmony. That's why our region is known as the Unique World. I think the name is well deserved. My brother left last night for the village. His escort is big and traveled slowly. Everybody has been assembled and is waiting for us on the beach. Oh! We'll have to stop on the way. Our allies have handed two prisoners over to my brother. They're foreigners who survived a shipwreck. Come with me, Pocahontas. They're waiting for us. My brother asked me to show you the two prisoners. It's very strange. Apparently, they never wash. Welcome, Princess Pocahontas. Thank you. Follow me. You have the honor of entering the Four Baycabs residence. As you are already aware, we've taken two prisoners. They concern me because it appears that they do not want to have anything to do with water. Strange. And since their arrival, an unknown sickness has spread throughout my people. None of our medicine men understand what it is. Have you tried to talk to them at least? I don't know how. They speak a strange language that I've never heard. One of our Aztec warriors speaks several languages. He tried to talk to them, but he got absolutely nowhere. I just don't know what to do. We've been given the gift of understanding what the white man says. We could try. Be my guest, but you won't be able to stand it. They smell so bad, it's impossible to stay close to them. My brother has ordered me to see them. I demand that they at least wash their faces before they enter my presence. We keep them isolated so the stench won't spread so far. Ah! Oh. Oh, please, me, have mercy, let me, let me go! Please, let me out of here! Please! Oh, water is slippery out! Your time to drown me! Please, stay here! Please! Don't leave me! Man, for you! Oh, have, have mercy! Oh, uh, washing is terrible! Stop it, please, have oh, mercy! This water will make me sick, please! Oh, oh, Madre de Dios! <laughs> Don't kill us, we are oh, good stop. men! Have pity oh. on us! Why don't you uh, if you're going to kill me? The Mayas are no, right. I've been around white men before and they always uh, smell terrible. Uh, 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 <gasps> Choo! Who are you? What are your names? We are Spanish sailors. We were on a big ship. Oh, what are you doing here? Our ship sent. We drifted to the coast on a raft and here we are now. Uh, you killed our companions, and now you want to do the same to us after torturing us <laughs> with your infernal tubs of water. Your companions were killed. You're the one spreading death. Yes, they shot at us. Don't be afraid. You can be our interpreters for the next Spaniards to land on these shores. Before we kill them, we'll make them talk. Your name will be Guerrero. You're going to become a Mayan prince who will fight to protect the Maya from the Spanish invaders. I know that in Spanish, that name means warrior. That's what you'll be for us. I'm with Pocahontas. Her words tell all. We're going to bring the Spaniards deeper inland. It's safer. If they are indeed carrying a contagious disease, they won't be able to spread it so easily. Welcome. Thank you, great priest. Thousands of people have come to hear your message, and after the ceremony, an Aztec delegation will escort you to their territory. Oh.
Before hearing the message the Great Spirit has sent us through this young girl, we must render homage to all our gods for their protection and benevolence. Baba Daba Patras Capra. Baba Capra. No, please. I must admit, I'm very sorry to see you go. I'll bet your priests aren't. <laughs> <laughs> the escort will accompany you to the Aztec territory is here. He is awaiting your decision. We will leave tomorrow morning at dawn. I'm losing my new friends, but I am comforted by the fact that my cousin, hungry for blood, will be accompanying you. He is proud to have been chosen for this task. Pocahontas. This is my cousin. Hello. Oh. Don't be afraid. Those are Aztecs. Oh. We are Aztec warriors. We have come to escort you. Everybody else seems so calm. He's an Aztec courier carrying a message on a papyrus scroll. He brings it to another courier who hands it to the next. A very efficient means of communication. Princess Pocahontas, I'm sorry, but we have to camp here tonight on this open land. Tomorrow we have to go through a bandit infested area. But there is no need to worry. We'll keep watch over you. That's very kind of you, but there's no need. Pocahontas has her own brave warriors. You see, you don't have to keep watch over me. Oh, don't be offended. It's just that I feel very safe under the watchful eyes of my own warriors. Speaking of which, there's no need to call me princess. Tell me, fine Aztec, what is your name? I belong to the Order of the Arrow Warriors. My name is Red Heron. They say because I have a, a long neck. Princess. <laughs> what are those enormous heads, Red Heron? Are they some kind of totem? No, the Olmecs, who no longer exist, sculpted these. These heads represent the heads of giants who populated the Earth long before we did. 
That's nonsense. <laughs> Everyone knows there's no such thing as giants. That's what you say, but a few years ago, we found a leg bone as tall as I am. There are strange bones where we come from, too, but they belong to ancient animals. Sure, but there's no doubt those are human heads. I, for one, am convinced the giants used to live here. Tomorrow you will sleep in an inn, and the day after tomorrow we will finally reach the capital Tenochtitlan. Is it as big and beautiful a city as Uxmo, the one we just left? Bigger. It's the biggest and most beautiful Mayan city. Remember, in the past, the Mayas were much more powerful. The sacred city of Uxmo isn't as important anymore. On the other hand, Tenochtitlan gets bigger and more beautiful every year. You'll see. You must have conquered a lot of tribes to grow so big and powerful. We fought battles against many tribes, but many others became our allies. The tribes have their own organizational system and chiefs, but they have to pay us a duty. Do you perform human sacrifices? My soldiers and I heard Pocahontas speak at Uxmo, but neither the Mayas nor us Aztecs can accept what she said. Every nation in the world offers human sacrifices to its gods. To be chosen for sacrifice is an honor for us a tribute to the divine. It's part of our religious tradition. We call it the blossom of death. It only exists at the heart of our unique world. It's an ancient custom which is fundamental in our tribes. Are brave warriors given up as sacrifices too? No, they have to stay in this world and fight courageously. Then how do you find people to sacrifice if you've already conquered all the neighboring tribes? That's exactly our problem. We offer fewer and fewer sacrifices nowadays, and the gods are getting angry. They unleash disasters and cause earthquakes. So where do you find your victims for the sacrifices? We invented what we call the War of Flowers. The tribes fight against each other in order to take prisoners, which they then offer as sacrifices. Preceding the inauguration of the new pyramid at Tenochtitlan, 20,000 prisoners were offered as sacrifices over three days. The king of Texcoco, the city we are coming to, would like to host you and your escort for the night. Texcoco is a powerful city whose king is an important ally, a very wise and enlightened ruler by the name of Netzawalpili. He offers lessons in his palace to worthy citizens, no matter what their social background. How do you know all these things? I come from a family of peasants near Tenochtitlan. One day, the king of Texcoco sent for me to be schooled in his palace because someone had told him I was bright. Come and see the bathroom. You better find out how it works before you use it. Come on, get up, follow me. It's dishonorable for an important citizen to try to run away from death. Dishonorable for him, his family, and his city. The blossom of death is a possibility for all of us every day of our lives. We are brought up to accept what life gives us with honor and grace. <laughs> 
Have you always had this tradition of human sacrifices? No, there weren't many human sacrifices before the Mexicas or Aztecs came. The Mexicas or Aztecs were the last people to come to this land for refuge. But if they came to seek refuge, then surely they had to obey the rules of those here before them. How did they come to be the rulers? When they first came, we gave them a little island in the middle of a lake. Since they didn't have enough food to feed their families, they invented a new way of growing corn. They floated enormous rafts on the lake, covered them with earth, and planted their corn. They did it again for several years, and that's how they not only survived, but prospered. As the years passed, they went on to become fearsome warriors and shrewd politicians. Soon, all the tribes in the region were forced to become their allies. They made up stories of a glorious past and destroyed our books to rewrite new ones about their greatness. But it was impossible for the Aztecs to destroy every trace of the civilizations that had existed long before their arrival. You're talking about something in particular, aren't you? That's a wild pili. I'm thinking about the ruins at Teotihuacan and Tula. Those two cities were bigger and more populated than Tenochtitlan. Now the Aztecs call Teotihuacan the place where the gods gather. But Teotihuacan and Tula were built by the Toltecs. We know from their wall paintings that they never offered human sacrifices to their gods, just flowers, butterflies, and birds. There's only one picture with fighting in it. There's a warrior playing at war, and his spear is decorated with feathers. The Toltec's gods were peace-loving. One of them, Quetzalcoatl, is still revered by many tribes. Quetzalcoatl, the feathered snake, symbolizes both strength and grace, two characteristics you don't usually put together. Look, that's a reproduction of a Toltec painting showing the feathered snake. That's no god with the snake. It's a white man, a Spaniard. He's wearing the same kind of helmet. I've heard something about white men living among our neighbors, the Mayas. That's probably why we thought the prediction came true. What prediction was that? Allow me to tell you the story of Quetzalcoatl, whom the Mayans named Kukulkan. We know the Toltecs were very different from us. They wore beards and tilled the earth so well that there were no more deserts. Quetzalcoatl was a good king and a wise man who invented the calendar, charts of the stars, numbers that we still use, and many cooking recipes. It is said that during his reign, different colored cotton grew, as if it had already been dyed. As for the corn, each ear was almost too big for one man alone to carry. Well, then what happened? It's a great story, but something must have happened since then. Legend has it that one day Quetzalcoatl did something contrary to his noble behavior. He went to the shores of the Eastern Ocean, built a raft, and sailed off, promising to come back. From that day on, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered snake, was worshipped by all the tribes. So when the Spaniards landed, you all thought that Quetzalcoatl and the Toltecs had returned. No, I never thought that. When Ahuitzotl, the Aztec chief, died, his son, Cuauhtémoc, wasn't chosen to succeed him. His nephew, Montezuma, was chosen instead. Montezuma was indecisive and obsessed with the future. And Montezuma was the one who thought that Quetzalcoatl and the Toltecs had returned when the Spaniards landed. This conviction led him to make some bad decisions. Chief Nenzahualpili, too.
from the way he described it, Tenochtitlan is gonna be really amazing. I wonder why the chief wasn't wearing anything to describe his rank. He told me it's because their tradition says that a man can only show off something he achieved by his own hand. I'll always remember the poems he recited and his father's stories. Me too. I'll always carry them with me. I already know them by heart. The circle of life keeps going each time the sun rises in the morning. Let us remember the lessons our ancestors taught us to respect nature and all living creatures. Each clear sparkling stream is blood in our veins. The sea reflects the grace of the gods which showers down on men, blessing them with strength and courage.